Good morning. My apologies that I cannot be present today. However, I'm honored to speak to you and thank you for giving me your time to say a few words. As an in-house IP professional, I see how daunting IPR enforcement on the internet can be. Today, there are 3.5 billion people online, representing 46% of the global population. Five years ago, this number was only 30%. 95% of the world's population is now covered by a cellular connection and there are nearly 7.1 billion cellular connections worldwide. By 2020, globally, there will be 6.1 billion smartphone users led by huge growth in less mature markets. And about 70% of the world's population will be online in five years' time. This population of mobile users will have the internet at their fingertips nearly everywhere they go. In September, September 2014, there were 1 billion websites in existence. This impressive number is mostly due to the launch of new GTLDs. Before 2013, there were only 22. To date, there are 639 GTLDs. This internet growth certainly provides numerous advantages to economic development and consumer choice, and it presents far-reaching benefits to global commerce and communication. However, it also provides space for illegal activities. And these activities, even though committed in a virtual space, have real-life consequences. Counterfeiting, a 40 trillion rupee industry, is a threat, not only to brand owners, but the government, the economy and public safety. Counterfeits are unaccounted in the legitimate trade channels and they steal from governmental tax revenues. The counterfeit trade affects every industry, so the impact is vast. Counterfeited goods include foods that can make people sick, and electronics that can malfunction and endanger lives. Counterfeits are sold by criminals that participate in organized crime and terrorist acts. And criminals prefer to sell counterfeits on the internet for many reasons. They can hide behind the anonymity of the internet. With the dark web, even their IP addresses can be hidden. It makes it difficult for brand owners to find out who is counterfeiting their goods. They can sell to consumers globally, outside of the national limits of law enforcement. And this international reach forces brand owners to prosecute cases outside their local jurisdiction. They can display genuine goods on their site and ship counterfeit goods to the consumers. And this makes it difficult for brand owners to determine if a site is selling counterfeits without making costly purchases from the site. And they can even uh, quickly open a new site when one site is shut down, making it a real struggle for brand owners to effectively stop them. Entire criminal networks are involved with counterfeiting, which leads to hundreds of sites selling the same products on various servers, making it an arduous task for the brand owner to take down the counterfeit rings without working with authorities. And for these reasons, brand owners cannot tackle online counterfeiting alone. That's why we lean on the collective voice created by the membership of INTA to work together to develop anti-counterfeiting solutions for the internet. Thank you for your kind attention and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you, Ronald, for this uh, very interesting uh, background on counterfeiting issues. In fact, anti-counterfeiting is the top priority for INTA. It has always been, but it's becoming even a bigger priority now. In fact, our anti-counterfeiting committee is one of our largest committees with 253 members. And the committee is in charge of uh, developing projects to protect brand owners, but also to protect consumers. Just to name a few, INTA has compiled a list of notice and takedown policies for over 150 platforms worldwide where you have had companies such as uh, American Express, MasterCard, uh, but also uh, Amazon, Facebook, Alibaba, Mercado Libre participating. We also have developed best practices on how to address the sales of counterfeits on internet, and this is a project that we're currently updating. And finally, we're putting together global policy dialogues on online counterfeiting. We have had such dialogues in countries 
such as China, Hong Kong, Thailand, Philippines, Serbia, Macedonia, United Arab Emirates, and today we're pleased to be here in India. As I said, any kind of feeding is really a priority for our association. In fact, there is more to come. We're putting an anti-counterfeiting day at the annual meeting. We're developing additional projects to precisely train customs. And I would like to really thank Commissioner Kumar and all participants to today's dialogue. INTA is really privileged to be part of this conversation. So I really wish you a great session. Thank you.